Every year, the NBA Draft represents an opportunity to make 60 young basketball players' dreams come true by hearing their names called by a team that selects them to play for their team on draft night. It's a moment no player ever forgets, and it's a milestone millions of kids dream of achieving. So if I were to tell you that a player was in an opportunity to have this experience and they turned it down, you would think they were crazy, right? Well, this brings us to the topic of today's video, where we'll be discussing two players in particular from the 2021 NBA Draft that were told by teams that they wanted to draft them, and these players told those teams not to do it, with those two players being Austin Reeves and Joel Ayayi. In this video, we'll discuss what kind of players they are that would have gotten them drafted, the reason that they told these teams not to take them, and why they now surprisingly look smarter than ever as a result of this decision. Before we start though, it turns out about 60% of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so please, if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but I would also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. To start things off, we should begin with a bit of an overview of who Joel Ayayi and Austin Reeves are, and what got them into this position in the first place. Starting with Ayayi, he played the last three seasons at Gonzaga, who have been one of the most successful college teams in that span. In his first season, he mostly rode the bench, playing sparingly here and there, but in year two, he earned a bigger role and eventually worked his way into the starting lineup. Then last season, in year three, he really emerged as one of the most important players in the team's starting lineup, and while there were other star potential with talent around him, typically getting more of the attention by the public, anyone who watched Gonzaga consistently knew how much of an impact he provided across the board in the team's backcourt on their way to a national championship game appearance in this past season. Ayayi is a combo guard who embraced a role player's level of workload and made the absolute most of it. Every year he improved as a three-point shooter, he plays very good perimeter defense against both guard positions, putting his 6'5 frame to good use, he moves well off the ball making good cuts to the basket to create space and open looks for himself, and with the ball in his hands, he's a pretty good pick and roll ball handler. He's not ball dominant at all, he knows his role, and he works hard, and at the next level, those are valuable traits to have as a young player trying to work his way into a team's rotation. Now, as for Austin Reeves, he's a bit of a different type of prospect, but his skill set is still definitely valuable at the next level as well. Reeves is an older player having spent five seasons in college because he had to sit out a year when he transferred from Wichita State to Oklahoma, but he too emerged more and more every season. Early on at Wichita, he was used primarily as a three-point specialist off the bench, knocking down threes at a very reliable clip, but when he transferred to Oklahoma, he became their go-to guy. In his number one option role on this team, his scoring soared to about 18 points per game this past season, but admittedly his efficiency wavered a bit as a result. Now he did develop a ton as an overall scorer and shot creator off the dribble at Oklahoma, which helped him become a legitimate NBA prospect on the radar of plenty teams, and another positive to take away that calmed some of the concerns about that wavering efficiency is that at the next level he won't be nearly as much of a high usage player, and his time at Wichita State showed that he could excel in a reduced role where he was just expected to shoot the ball well. So, as you can see, both of these guys were talented enough to be drafted in the NBA Draft this year, and most draft analysts agreed, ranking them firmly in the top 60 of their player rankings. But being completely honest, and not trying to overrate them too much, they are both players that would have been selected in the second round, which is still awesome, but also a bit more challenging. See, when you're drafted in the second round, you're not guaranteed anything contract-wise, and the rookie wage scale that applies to players selected in the first round does not apply there. For players selected here, that teams believe will be able to immediately carve out a role in the team's rotation, they typically negotiate contract 
contract agreements in the same ballpark as late first round picks. But for players drafted in the second round that aren't viewed as guys guaranteed to make the team, the negotiations can vary. Sometimes they get non-guaranteed deals, which results in them getting cut during training camp. Sometimes they get short one or two year deals worth the minimum, and sometimes they're not even signed at all. Another option for them that also presents itself for undrafted players as well, though, is the opportunity to be given two-way contracts, meaning that they will spend a certain amount of time during the season playing in the G League and a certain amount of time during the season playing with the NBA squad, and their salaries adjust according to how long they spend with each team. The difference, though, is that the undrafted players can field interest from any team willing to offer them a two-way contract, while the second-round picks are locked into the team that drafted them. So, tying this all back into the story we're going over today, I think you see where I'm going with this. Both Ayayi and Reeves entered the NBA draft hoping to hear their names called in the first round, but as that was the unlikely situation from the beginning, it did not happen. Their agents then notified them that there were several teams interested in selecting them in the second round, but according to Sam Vecini of The Athletic, they both told those teams to pass on drafting them. This is incredibly bold, and honestly a bit too risky if you don't play your cards right, but if you do, then you can have the ability to choose where you play next season, and both Ayayi and Reeves agreed to sign two-way contracts with the Los Angeles Lakers after all of it. We've all heard of veterans taking less money to team up with stars looking to win titles with some of the best teams in the league, but this is genuinely the first time I've ever seen rookies do it. The Lakers didn't have any draft picks in this year's draft, and yet they still came away with two talented rookies who got the chance to choose to play for them because of the allure of teaming up with a legend like LeBron James and the potential to be in a title-winning squad early on in their careers. Now, there are a few more huge reasons why this was brilliant by both of them, starting with the fact that the Lakers are a team that have done pretty well developing their two-way players in the past. Alex Caruso is the most recent example of someone the Lakers brought up through that system, and he just got paid handsomely by the Chicago Bulls in free agency this summer. Additionally, while the path to consistent minutes in the Lakers' rotation doesn't seem to be there for them this season, as long as they improve and impress in their time spent in the G League this year, there's a very good chance that they can fight for spots in the team's rotation next year, as all but four current Lakers players will be free agents after the season. There can, of course, be plenty of debate over whether or not this is good for the game of basketball, and if player flexibility is going a bit too far with stuff like this, but at the very least, these two have done very well for themselves without question to set themselves up for the future, and are now involved in one of the most storied franchises in NBA history as a result of it. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about the decision that they made. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.